How to speak Aussie. Lesson one. Greeting an Australian. Instead of saying hello and how are you today, say how are you going, how are you trekking, or just simply good eye. Now it is worth noting that Australians can be a little upfront, so just don't be too alarmed if you're greeted with sup cunt. If you want an answer of substance, you'll find you won't get far, but here are some responses to being asked how you are. You might say, yeah, not too shabby, or she'll be right. Try to sound like you've just woken up and it'll come out just right. Pronunciation is key, but we'll get onto that later. For now, just refrain from saying fancy, dance, or data. Now, a woman is a chick, or a sheila, or a bird. A bloke is a man, and a dag is a nerd. You call your friend a mite, or if you really want to, cobber. And if you pull that off, you're on track to being a yobbo or a yobba. Lesson 2. Everyday Conversation If you're impressed by something, say, that's hectic, or far out. And if you agree with what's been said, bloody oath is the thing to shout. If you're keen or stoked for something, it means you're excited and can't wait. If you're going ham or going off like a frog in a sock, you're in a maniacal state. If you're checking something out, you're having a gander or taking a squiz. And don't freak out if you hear spider, it's just a soft drink with some fizz. A pickup truck is a ute and a thrift store is an op shop. And if someone's been Mike and bulk, they should be able to buy a lot. Thongs are not underwear and root isn't routine for short. Nor is having a bat anything remotely to do with sport. Now, footy refers to AFL. If you don't know what that is, just stay silent. It's their weird version of rugby that they've somehow made more violent. Back to pronunciation. You should sound as nasal as you can. You're aiming to make yourself as difficult as possible to understand. Flour is flour, yogurt is yogurt, and it's not a party, it's a party. And instead of saying cool, it's either cooter or dardy. They often pronounce words lazily, and though it isn't strictly wrong, they'll find a way to shorten anything that's over three syllables long. So, Australia is Australia, and particularly is particularly. You'll soon find yourself reaching the end of your sentences rather quickly. Try saying, they're flogging tickets for the lotto at the servo this arvo. If you understood any of that, you deserve a big bravo. Lesson 3. The Elements. If you're going on a roadie to whoop whoop, you may be in for a scare, because it means that you'll be driving straight into the middle of nowhere. Just make sure you have a hat and a solid pair of sunnies, and hope to God that where you're going you'll have access to flushable dunnies. When driving in the outback, there will be heaps of ruse about, so if one jumps in front of you, just try your best to not freak out. If you think you've gotten lost and are heading the wrong way, tell your driver to chuck a UE and you just might save the day. If you decide for some reason to camp, you'd do well to bring a swag. Despite what the Aussies will say, it's essentially a fancy sleeping bag. Now, it's imperative you visit some beaches during any Australia trip, so just be sure to bring your bathers if you're going in for a dip. There are boardies or stubbies, which are just ways of saying trunks, and then there are budgie smugglers for the guys that think they're hunks. If you care at all about your health, apply not sun cream but sunscreen, or you'll become what they call a leatherback, which is quite a sight to be seen. Lesson 4. Surviving Aussie Humour Now, Australians have their own very special type of humour. It's a lesson I wish I'd learned considerably sooner. They call it Australian sarcasm, but approach it with suspicion, because the way I see it, lying is a more accurate description. It's neither witty nor logical, in fact it's just plain cruel, because its one and only purpose is to make you feel like a fool. One minute you're having a conversation on current affairs, and suddenly you're getting a lecture on the existence of drop bears. In Australia you don't take the piss, but you pull the piss instead and you'll need to know some common insults if you want to stay ahead. If somebody calls you Darrow, you should feel under the weather. It's what they call homeless people and means you should get your life together. If you're called a suki lala, it means you're an awful winger, and if you're called a dirty ranger, it simply means that you're ginger. A drongo is an idiot, and a larrikin is a wildcard. Then there's dickhead, dipstick, dipshit, fuckwit, fuckstick, and fucktard. 
A bogan is a rough Australian, comparable to a redneck. It's really the insult to go for if you're going all hands on deck. If somebody says that's fat or that's heavy or that's whack, you may have gone too far and should try your best to take it back. If it's fine, they'll say no dramas or no worries or no wackers might, and you may reply with sweet airs or too easy to confirm everything's all right. Lesson five, eating out. Now, Aussies love their food, so there's a lot here you should know. Some of these are tricky, so I'll try to take things slow. If you have chockey for your brekkie, then I think it's fair to say that you've had a rather indulgent first meal of the day. Then you'd think a lollipop is a lolly, and it would be the logical conclusion, but no, a lolly is just any sweet, much to my confusion. Peppers are called capsicums, which is nothing short of treason, and their Weetabix is called Wheatbix, with a hyphen for literally no reason. If someone says they got donuts, try your best to keep things candid, because sad as it is, it means you'll find them empty-handed. If you hear the words, Oi, we're off to a feed at Mecca's, marsh out, you are going to a McDonald's and won't need to get your wallet out. Now, crisps are chips and chips are fries, which will make your brain go numb, and Chewy isn't a Star Wars character, but just another word for gum. A Barbie is not a plastic doll, but just short for a barbecue. Rest assured, if you're travelling down under, you'll be attending a fair few. Now, at an Aussie Barbie, there are snags to be exploited, and if they're served between a slice of bread, try not to be too disappointed. If you utter the word ketchup, expect nothing but remorse. So, to top off your snag, you'll need to ask for tomato sauce. Lesson 6. The Art of the Aussie House Party There is so much drinking slang, it's a language in its own right, and you'll need to be well versed in it if you want to survive the night. A condition of any house party is that it's strictly BYO, which means that before you attend, you'll need a trip to the bottle A bag of goon goes a long way, it's just a lot of very cheap wine, but I'd advise staying away from it if you want to make it past nine. If the goon is too daunting and beer is more your scene, ask for a carton or a slab and they'll know just what you mean. To avoid embarrassment, one should arrive at least an hour late. It'll enable you to sneak out unnoticed if it's really not that great. Once inside, you'll see figures resembling animals in a zoo. But as the saying goes, in Australia, do as the Australians do. If you're going on a bender, it means there's alcohol ahead. But if you're maggot, maggoted or blotto, it means that you're already dead. There's getting silly, getting sloshed, getting plastered and getting loose. They are all at your disposal, so start putting them to use. They are still talking about alcohol if they say they're drinking piss. But on the off chance that they're not, I wouldn't go in for a kiss. If somebody shouts, skull it, you should down your drink in one. Which, if you're drinking goon, really isn't very fun. A stubby is just a glass bottle of beer that you hold, and true Aussies use stubby holders to keep their little hands from getting cold. If you don't know the meaning of I feel a chunder coming on, before you figure it out, you'll want to be long gone. If you yourself feel ill, there's no shame in taking a tack yak. If carried out correctly, it should put you right back on track. Now, there are some double entendres ahead which are rather confusing, But take it from me, they're ones you don't want to be misusing. Hooking up means getting off, and getting off is a hookup. Either way, they're all things you'd do well not to interrupt. Now, a billy is not a person, as one might come to think, nor is ice something that you should try putting in your drink. If you are not in the kitchen, but hear the words baked or cooked, it is another instance where context should not be overlooked. To check your friends are still alive when the next day is dawning, it is appropriate to ask, how'd you pull up this morning? If they reply, I'm hell crook, been spewing chunks, I. It means they're rather ill and you'd do well to stay away. If they say, oh might, I'm up shit creek, the rent's been going off on me. It means the situation is dire and their parents are none too happy. Well, that just about sums up everything I've come to know. So get out there and have fun discovering your own new lingo. Now that you've learned to speak Aussie, when they ask you where you're from, they'll be very surprised to hear that you're just another bloody pom. It's a scary world down under, but I survived and so can you. 
Just remember to be yourself and you'll be what they call true blue.